Hey, it's Gary with Soccer Pro and Soccer Labs. And if you are knowing me from Soccer Labs, you may not know about Soccer Pro. And if you know me from Soccer Pro, vice versa, maybe you don't know that we have our own technical training center. Well, anyhow, one of the things that ends up happening at Soccer Labs is a lot of the kids end up with nicknames, mostly because I forget their names and just call them something, you know, sometimes random things, whatever. But we've also nicknamed the days of the week. And it kind of started just as fun. But when you really look at it, it's almost like the names actually match the way I run the training programs. So Monday is Mellow Monday. And why is Monday more mellow? Well, because these kids are coming off, you know, two, three games on the weekend. You don't want to kill them. You want to work more on skills, more on recovery. Not so much that we're trying to get them to recover at soccer labs, but I don't want to torture them by putting them right into a hard pounding workout right after they played a game on Sunday, maybe on Saturday, maybe two on Saturday, two on Sunday, who knows. But it's really just not smart coaching to just pound these kids into the ground. So what I do is I structure things so that on Monday they come in and we just do more skills development and a little bit more work on the ball so that we're giving these kids a chance to recover from their hard pounding on the weekend. Now, once we get into Tuesday, now that day is tyrannical Tuesday. And now we start to work harder. Okay, now we're going to do some harder speed work. We're going to get onto the Vertimax. We're going to be doing some sprinting, some jump squats, you know, some harder work that gets these kids faster, right? Of course, we're still going to do ball work. We always do. But Tyrannical Tuesday is where we start to do some harder work to make the speed go faster of the kids. And then we get into uh, No Wimp Wednesday, then uh, Triple Threat Thursday. I don't know what that means, just rhymes, comes off the tongue better. Freaky Fast Friday and Super Speed Saturday. Again, why do we do those on Friday and Saturday? Well, because we're going to work on things that get them fast on the ball. We're not gonna pound them with the heavy Vertimax work. We're not gonna do all that speed work. Even though we call it Super Speed Saturday, it's really speed of the ball, not speed of running, okay? So I don't want these kids going into their weekend with heavy legs. So on Friday and Saturday, we're not going to do a heavy load. We're not gonna do a heavy workout load. We're gonna do more ball work. All right, so that just makes sense. Now, we just came off Tyrannical Tuesday and I wanna tell you, I am a tyrant when it comes to making kids work both foot or both feet, yeah, both feet. Because it's like, to me, a boxer. You know, you never saw a boxer box with one hand, and a soccer player should play with both feet. It just makes sense. You know, they're much faster when they manage the ball with two feet. And when we're doing drills and we're taking times, you know, we can clearly demonstrate to these kids, look, when you do this type of dribbling through this cone sequence, you're much faster doing this. And then if you want to do this, it's going to be slower. And if you use one foot, it's going to be slower even yet. So we actually demonstrate to them with the stopwatch what is going to be the fastest for them to get through. And it's always the same. I don't care what kid it is. It's always going to be the same technique using both feet outside, inside, and uh, setting the ball at the outside, pushing it with the outside. So it just always works that way. So one of the things that happens now with soccer pro is that i do a lot of analysis of youth soccer games and with youth soc youth soccer games you can tell this is unscripted i hope um anyhow with youth soccer games there are some very predictable trends and traits that i see constantly it's over and over and over again and a lot of it has to do because these kids play with one foot Okay, most kids play with one foot. So it makes them very predictable, not only in what they're going to do with the ball, but how the whole team is going to play because they're gonna all tend to play as a right foot centric team. And then they're gonna move the ball in one direction. And I'm sure you've seen in your own observations at the games where the kids are playing, that all of a sudden the ball just seems to be on one side of the field too long. Especially if your kid's on the other side of the field, you might be wondering, hey, why isn't anyone passing to him or her? But it's not that they're not passing to him or her, it's that they're playing to one side of the field because that's the way they play based on the fact that they're one-footed soccer players. It just happens all the time. And again, I see this constantly. So as a coach, it's easy for me to say, hey, look, we wanna play on this guy's right foot, just shut him down because that's all he plays with, all right? Uh, we can take some very skilled, talented players and just shut them down because they have no second option. If you don't have a second option, you are easy, predictable, and you will be beat by average players. Okay. 
So one thing happens, of course, I um, sometimes say things that I think are just like common sense, but then I find out that no, it's not common sense. In fact, uh, here's a case where this video uh, was played and I said, hey, great talent, poorly coached. This is a gifted player, but she can't play with both feet. And I could tell because she did exactly what all one-footed players do. There is a predictable way that they play down the right side line. There's a predictable way that they play down the left side line. And when they are on the strong side, they will drive that ball all the way deep to the baseline and then cross it in. Okay, they want to keep the ball on their right foot. If they cut in early, they got to move it to their left foot. They don't like that. So they drive it deep. If they are on the left side, on the weak side, they are going to pull in early, about the 20-yard, 25-yard um, area, and they're going to cut in. And they cut into pressure every single time. It's so predictable. You'll see it over and over and over. They cut into pressure. Okay. So what I do, of course, is I want the players to play with the right foot and the left foot. I want them to be unpredictable. And whenever I get players that are coming into soccer labs, I try to get them to understand that if they play their left foot, even though it's not as strong as their right foot, if they play their left foot because they are maybe at 85, 90% as good as their right foot, they will beat most players because the players are naturally defending the right foot. Whether they're consciously doing it or unconsciously doing it, they are playing defense against right-footed soccer players all the time. So these right-footed soccer players are going to play in a very systematic way, very predictable way, and they are going to defend against that. And again, whether they know it or not, they are practicing constantly to play against, defend against a one-footed player. So when you become a two-footed player and all of a sudden you do what everyone else is doing, but then you fake that direction and you go in the opposite direction and go onto your left foot, you beat those guys, okay? This happens all the time. I'll see these kids at practice and I'll say, hey, just you know, get that on your left foot. Take that fake to your left and keep going with it on your left foot and you'll win. And sure enough, 1v1s, 2v2s during the game, it doesn't matter. When they start pushing that ball into the left foot, when they start shooting with their left foot, dribbling with their left foot, doing things opposite of what everyone else is doing, they throw the defenders off and they create far more opportunities for themselves. So let me just play this video and, and you can see down here that I made this comment and then there's 28 replies here and trust me, there's 20 more here. And that's uh, essentially 48 replies, most of them just tell me what an idiot I am for saying a kid should play with both feet. And frankly, this is a problem, right? These coaches should all be saying the same thing. When I hear coaches telling me that I'm an idiot because I insist that players need to learn how to play with both feet, well, I sit there and wonder, it's like, what's wrong with you? Okay, it's, how many times do we tell a boxer, punch with one hand? Again, I use that analogy all the time, but it's so obvious and so true. Even when a boxer has knockout power in their right hand or their left hand, we never say, well, just use that hand then. If you can knock people out with your left hand, then just only throw punches with your left hand. It's just a silly concept. The same way it's a silly concept that kids at the youngest age, I mean four, five, six, when they come into soccer labs, are pushed to use both feet. That's the first thing we do is just make everything balanced. Dribble with your right foot, dribble with your left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, shooting right, shooting left, shooting right, shooting left. We make them do every single thing with both feet because it's critical to their long-term development. These are foundational skills that they have to have so that they can elevate their game during practice. And when they take these skills out onto the field, when they have a strong foundation, they can build on them. If you don't build the foundation properly, everything you do after that is kind of a kludge. You know, you might use one foot very effectively, like this girl here does a pretty good job, but she's never going to be the player she could be if she were playing with both feet. And she makes very simple errors that all the kids make, predictable play that all the kids play. So let me run this through for you real quick. It's only a 20 second video. I'm going to first run it through and let you see the whole thing. And then I'm going to stop it and hopefully be able to comment on the parts I'm trying to highlight. Okay. All right, now it's just going to go through in slow motion. So what I want you to see is, first of all, I think I think this girl's a good player. 
I think they're very talented. Obviously, she's a good player. She's playing on a boys' team, so she's already a step ahead all the other girls probably at her age in her area. Now, what I want you to notice is good anticipation of where this pass is going, but also the fact that the reason it was so easy to get this pass is this guy's passing wrong. You see how he's turning to his uh, to what should be a left-footed kick and using his right foot, which means he's kicking open hip. He's not getting the power on the ball. And he's also telegraphing the pass by turning his hips that way. It's very easy to predict. So it's no surprise that she was able to jump this pass. You see that? He used his right foot. Why? He should have been swinging through with his left. It doesn't make any sense to do it that way. It makes him slow. Okay. When they have to come around the ball to kick it, it makes them slow. Slow and predictable. All right. So she gets the ball here. That's good. Okay. And now she does a nice little little fake move here. I really like that move. It was great. One goes from her right foot to her left foot. Pop. And she is gone. Okay. Now. What's happening here? See, she looks to the right. She sees the defenders coming down on her. So why would she turn in? Well, if she keeps coming, she's going to you know, have to cross that ball with her left foot. She doesn't want to do that. So she's turning in already. And again, this is always at that 20, 25 yard line. I can't tell exactly where she is, but it, it's always the same. Okay, so she's turning right into the defender. And now she is giving that defender an equal chance at the ball because it's also between her and the defender. It's really not a good place to put the ball. Keep the ball on the opposite side. Keep it, your body between the ball and the defender. Use your body as blockage, not putting the ball between you. That's just giving them equal opportunity at the ball, which is a bad idea. Okay, so now the defender comes in, makes the play, and she's turning. But now, again, very predictable. Look at the way she's turned. She's already turning backwards because she wants to use her right foot. The reality is the player's over here. All she has to do is turn. She could keep going down the line. There's nothing in front of her, nothing. Now, again, look at the way she's turned. She's turned backwards going up the line. This guy is already on her back hip. If she were to turn and just come this way, this player would be behind her and then she could keep going, I mean, in the direction you want to go, which is towards the goal, because you, you can't score going backwards. I mean, you kind of can, but not really. You have to be moving the ball forwards towards the goal. That's how you score. And then people say, well, what about the back pass? Well, yes, you do need to pass backwards sometimes. Okay, it makes sense. But you don't pass backwards because you want to. You pass backwards when you need to. All right, moving the ball backwards in the wrong direction never gets you to the right direction. At some point, you got to focus on getting the ball to the goal. All right, anyhow, so now again, where's the ball? It's on her right foot. And she's going to meg him. Okay, fools the guy. Now, look what happens here. She's going to stutter step because she wants to get the ball back onto her right foot instead of just driving through and getting her body in here and then using her left foot. She stutter steps so that she can use her right foot, giving the defender another opportunity to get at the ball. Watch. Okay, so again, right foot, screwing her up. She needs to get more comfortable with her left foot. And let's go through this in slow motion now so you come through. You see the stutter step, and now that sloppy pass. So that sloppy outside of the foot pass Again, is it something that they should never do? Well, no, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it per se. The trouble is they use it in place of doing a proper kick with their left foot, a proper pass with their left foot. So why did she do that pass with the outside of her foot? It made no sense. It's a sloppy pass, it's slow, it's less accurate than coming through and using the inside of her left foot. So these are the things that these players will do when they only have one foot, okay? They play the wrong way, they cut in the wrong way, they use the wrong side of the foot to pass, they use the wrong foot to pass. And this is why I'm such a tyrant, not just on Tuesdays, not just on tyrannical Tuesday, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, every day of the week, you're going to hear me say left foot, left foot, left foot, left foot, left foot, because I want to see those kids using their left foot when they're supposed to, using their right foot when they're supposed to, and using them in balance so that they can be stronger, smarter players that beat the defenders with their weak foot, with the foot they're not expecting them to use, to shoot with their left foot because they're going to score more with their left foot because they're guarded on the right foot. So the opportunity is always going to be on your left foot. 
on a much higher basis, okay, on a percentage basis, much higher. So when you talk to players, they almost always score with their left foot because their right foot's always guarded. So when they're in a crowd, they need to be able to get that ball onto their left foot, shoot with their left foot. The defender is going to be on their right foot. They're going to be looking for that right-footed pass. If you want to have your kids playing with both feet, one, you got to get them into soccer labs. We'll get them trained up very quickly. Get them onto two-footed soccer. Get them to have the option to drive deep on both sides or to pass where they should be passing with the correct foot. And then, you know, Soccer Pro is something that you should be using to break down the videos, whether you're doing it and helping your kids, whether your coaches are doing it, which most of them aren't. You can also take the video and you can send it to another coach. Our Soccer Pro system has a coaching service where you can send it in and have someone else break it down for you. Or they can break down highlight videos for you if you need something to get recruited for your players page, which of course is included for free. Remember, Soccer Pro is 100% free to start, 100% free forever. Having a players page is a great way for your kid, your son, your daughter to put all their highlight videos, touch videos, game videos in one spot and just send one link that's personalized to them. I mean, if your kid's name is Billy Bob, then you can call it Soccer Pro slash you slash Billy Bob. Okay, it's that simple. And then he keeps that link forever for free forever that he can send to all the coaches. They can come back to his page, see his video, see his bio information, anything he wants to put on the page, searchable information. All his specs are um, easily searched on that page. So it's a great way and a convenient way for them to get recruited. So in summary, let me close this out. If you want your kids to play two-footed soccer, which they should, get them into soccer labs. I'll make sure they get onto both feet very quickly, very efficiently. In three or four sessions, we'll have them on that left foot and get them accelerating their ability to use that left foot very quickly. Weak foot, but typically it's a left foot. Two, if you don't have soccer pro, get one now. It's free now, free forever. And it's a great way to get recruited with those player pages. If you need help with the videos, you can have coaching videos made for you. You can have highlight videos made for you. Those highlight videos, coaching videos, anything you want can either be put on your player's page or just kept in your account for your education. So again, Gary with Soccer Pro, free coaching software, Soccer Labs, our indoor high-tech development center right in Mundelein, Illinois. Come on in, say hi, or just download your free account of Soccer Pro and become a better soccer player today. Have more success out on the pitch today. All right, have a great day. Bye now.